Okay, so uh, anybody who's visited my channel knows I love looking for data to process and analyze, and I'm always doing it with SETI data and, <laughs> and genome data and all sorts of things. I'm always trying to look for data to analyze and look for trends in and patterns in, and yeah, I've got, I've got issues, I know I have, but anyway. So I've been looking at the fail to deliver data on the SEC website, okay, and all the links are in the description, and I've read, I've read the comments here at the top, okay, and I've read, I've read through all of this, <clears throat> and I've read, I've read through these sections as well, okay, and um, and I'm wondering whether I should be worried. I'm wondering whether we should be worried. Is this another storm brewing? Is this another financial crisis that's that's brewing? Okay, so I, I encourage everybody who's interested in stock markets and investing and the economy to go and look at this website, this, the SEC's website, and read this information and do your own analysis and see what you think. Comment below and let me know what you think. Okay, but um, so what you should, should, should know, the text file contains a bunch of data for a two-week period or around about a two-week period and there's a bunch of files down below that we'll scroll to shortly. Okay, and um, it includes records where people have failed to deliver their shares. So they've sold shares that either they didn't have or they didn't deliver. Okay, so the values of the total fails to deliver shares represent the aggregate net balance of shares that failed to, deli to be delivered as of a particular settlement date. Okay, um, and down here it says, um, where, where did I, I was just reading it, sorry, I've been scrolling around and I should be highlighting stuff. Um, the figure is not a daily amount of fails, but a combined figure that includes both new fails on the reporting day as well as existing fails. Okay, so it's the current position of, of fails on a certain day. And there's multiple records in the file for each stock item, and I guess that's reported from different sources, for example, broker one and broker two and broker three and whatever. I think that's what's going on anyway. If I'm wrong, comment, okay? Um, and we can look at it further. Um, so it's, it's, it's the current, as, as accurate as possible figure for each uh, share or stock for each broker or clearinghouse or whatever. Okay, so um, I was worried I was going to have to go through and combine the previous files, but I know that's not the case now. I just look at the current file and that gives you the current position. So that's at least good news. <laughs> but the figures are enormous and we'll have a look at those shortly. Another point to consider is this note here under the data starting 2009. It might change by the time you look. But uh, please note that the fails to deliver can occur for a number of reasons on both long and short sales. So it's not just short as doing this, it could be longs as well. Therefore, fails to deliver are not necessarily the result of short selling and are not evidence of abusive short selling or naked short selling. Okay, so you've got to keep that in mind as well. These fails to deliver aren't necessarily people abusing the system. Okay, and how could they abuse it? Uh, if, 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 somebody, if somebody's shorting a stock, in other words, uh, betting the price of the stock's going to go down, and so they, so they say the stock's at $100 and they're betting it's going to go down to $10, and people take them up, them up on that bet and they don't deliver the, the, the shares or the money, <laughs> the $90 they were short if the stock does go down to $10. And if they don't settle, then they've effectively got to get out of jail free card. They could just wait till the price goes back up again, a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, wait till the price goes back up and then buy the stock at that price and settle then. Okay, so it's like they've got to get out of jail free card. That's why I don't like these fails to deliver. They, they, it seems really nasty. It seems like Perhaps people who are know how to work the system could be using it to work, to work the system. And that's bad. Look what happened in the global financial crisis. People who knew how to work the system, selling, selling mortgages to people that couldn't pay the mortgages and things, the, the, the brokers that were corrupt. And look what happened. The world's still paying for it. In my area, the GFC is still biting over 10 years later. Okay, we're still in a downturn, a massive downturn. <clears throat> property prices haven't stopped falling and, and unemployment's going up no matter what the government says in my local area anyway. So it's bad. So we don't want another global financial crisis, that's for sure. That's why I'm looking into this data and analysing it and trying to understand what it really means. I'm reading between the lines and analysing the data and all sorts of things. So um, anyway, so let's look down. So there's a whole bunch of data files here 
And um, so there's one for the second half of February, first half of February, second half of January, first half of January, and so on all the way down. And um, so that, that looking at the latest file, uh, that should be the current position for all stocks because it's the latest position and, and all previous positions combined and, and netted into one file, okay, according to the description above. Okay, and here's a, a quick look at the data. Don't panic, it looks a bit complicated, but it's not really complicated at all. You've got a, you've got a date here, a, a code, a CUSIP, which I guess is a code for a, a broker maybe, or a particular stock. Actually, I think it might be a particular stock because I've seen a, the code repeated for shares I'm, I'm looking at. Okay, a, a stock ticker symbol, uh, the quantity of fail to delivers, a description of the company, and the price, the closing price, uh, the, the day or the day before the uh, the stock failed to deliver. Okay, you know, so it's so it's this date here or the day before the closing price. Okay, so none of this data is guaranteed to be 100% accurate. So you got to take everything with a grain of salt. Although it should be highly accurate, I would be surprised if there's many errors in it or if it's wildly inaccurate. I'd be very surprised because this is a publication by the SEC, and they do their homework and they do their due diligence. You would hope. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I, I'd be very surprised if there's any errors in this data, let alone, uh, you know, the, anything significant anyway. Okay, and uh, so here's my little program here to, to, to process that data and and, uh, and um, analyze it a little bit. And it's only just getting started. So I've got, I've got a little text tools that I've developed and um, oh, I'll show you some of the code here. So here's some of the code. It's all in Java. So um, I'm going through working out various things and uh, Pretty boring stuff for people that aren't programmers, but anyway, really exciting for me because I love writing. I love writing code. Okay, and um, so I've processed this file, and here's my little tool, and the file contains four, nearly 4.1 billion sh sh stocks that were failed to deliver. Okay, almost 4.1 billion shares or stocks weren't delivered on time. Okay, the total value of those at the closing price quoted in the file was around about $36 billion, $36 billion. And the average price, so it's 36 billion divided by 4 billion, gives you a, an average price of about $8.99 a share. Okay. So we're talking about a problem that's 36, 37 billion in size and about 4 billion stocks or shares. So it's not a little problem. And uh, because these are two of the stocks I'm interested in, these are two of the ones that have been in the media a lot lately, and they're highly shorted, or especially GameStop is high, well, was highly shorted, it's not so much now. I was interested to see what the failure to delivers were um, for that stock. And okay, I've seen figures quoted all around the internet, I thought, but like everything, I want to check it for myself. Write the code, download the data, check it for yourself, and then you know for sure. Okay, so for GameStop, we're looking at 600,000 shares have been failure to delivered. A total price on the close, according to the closing price, which could be much lower than today, the closing price was, uh, the total of the closing price was forty-seven million dollars, and the average price, uh, closing price on uh, when when the failure to deliver happened, the average price was seventy-nine dollars, and the current share price is about two hundred and one dollars. So we're way short of that. So really, we're about ninety billion dollars short of where we need to be, and six hundred thousand shares. Okay, that's not a small problem, is it? And for AMC, uh, we're talking about 1.5 million shares and an 11, uh, 11 million dollar problem. And the average price is 7.29, which is much shorter of where it is now. It's currently around the 13 dollar mark. Okay, so so what do, what, what do these failure to deliverers really mean? Is it a short term problem? I, I know the SEC is looking into this now and they are looking at getting this cleared up so that people can't have a get out of jail free. If people are shorting stock, betting the price is going to go down and the price does go down and people call them and say, pay up pal. They, they, people can't say, oh, I'm, I'm going to oh, just wait till next week or the week after or the week after and I'll wait till the stock price recovers and we'll sort things out then. That's not how it works. If people make a bet and it com comes due on a certain date, you pay up. Okay, so I, I know the SEC are cracking down on this. I hope they crack down a lot. And uh, whoever's, whoever's, if people are gaming the system, they've got to go to jail. I mean, maybe, there, maybe there's no one gaming the system. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But it does seem like a lot of money. 
Uh, I mean, f- f- four, $4 billion shares short, and we're talking about $36 billion in money. That's a lot of money. Okay, And considering the prices are going up often, <laughs> you know, we could be talking about $100 billion in money in real, in real terms as of today. Could be. It's possible. I haven't done the figures, but it could be. So what do you think? Uh, am, am I right to be concerned? Uh, is this something we should all be concerned about? Is another financial crisis looming? Let me know in the description. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.